Welcome back to TTC. This past week we've been in Japan on a, well, let's call it fact-finding mission. Link to that if you haven't seen. But before I jumped on a plane, I wanted to make one of these because it's going to be my brother's birthday and he could really use one. Well, not this one. This is a simple proof of concepts I've been using for about a month and it seems to work pretty good. But essentially, a cordless car battery tender. One that runs off of different tool batteries like DeWalt, Hercules, and Milwaukee in this one's case using this custom adapter we made. But really, whatever flavor of battery you might have laying around in a more fleshed out, watertight, somewhat less thrown together way, that would make for a decent gift in my case. And off the hop, let's not reinvent the wheel though, a corded battery tender would probably work for you. So buy one of those. Or if your car is stored where there isn't power, like my weekend fun vehicle is, a solar battery tender is the go-to cordless option. I find most of these last about six months in rougher climates though, but I have found one that doesn't seem to mind weather and has stood the test of time, so that might be problem solved for you. This thing's over a year old, still working. It's in a solid piece of ice and it's recharging right now. Still sending a charge to the car. I keep it up here. See snow, ice, water. Still charging. Yeah, for some reason this one doesn't suck. It's in water right now and still charging, even in low light. Okay. Still charging. No problem. The cheaper and unbelievably high watts output ones always seem to fail on me. But what if your car is indoors without power or simply always in the darn shade, or you really want something to hold that will get you tackled at an airport, well then, that's what we have for you today if you want to join along for the build. Disclaimer, I'm far from an electrician, I just play with Pixie sometimes. Links to the parts below. First thing we have is a battery. This can be any 18, 20, 24 volt, 18 slash 20 volt, and why not 12 volt? Well, those typically are smaller, but also will too easily fall below the desired charging voltage that's going to be used in a bit here. Instead, we're going to be using a buck converter here with adjustable output voltage, 3 amp max or about 36 watts if the battery ever requests that much charge. Most trickle chargers are 1 to 2 amps, but this also allows me to use it as a makeshift memory saver when the car is unhooked from the battery and I'm working on it. This is essentially how it works. Currently, the car battery is 12.32 volts here, which is just about exactly 70% charge state. Not bad, cranks okay if a bit slow, but come winter time that also gets worse and worse. So with the potentiometer on the back of this little step down buck converter, we're gonna dial this thing to 12.65 volts. Near fully charged, but not quite there, like 95%. It simply sounds like a good spot to me. Then with the click of a button, we're at 12.4, 12.44 volts, about a 0.1 or 10% charge increase as it starts to lend some of that current to the car battery. And that all looks like this when pulling it out of my car's cozy cubby shelter. We're looking at about one, one and a quarter amps or 15 watts worth of juice going to the battery, which settles into about one, three quarters of an amp. And comparing to the 18 volt side versus the 12 volt side, the buck converter is eating up a lot less than a half of a watt, which seems not bad. I wouldn't use it hooked up while turning over the engine, but it seems like a good trickle charger at least. Now with this sort of thing, you can use some simple battery clamps, which is what we'll be building, as Bro has a handful of project cars to swap this between, hence the battery maintaining problem. But this one here, I simply wired to some leads that work with this connector, which I mounted out the grill. This allows it to be hooked and unhooked without popping the hood and makes for an easy thing to remember to do. So this is how we're going to make that, but ideally better and more waterproof in a watertight case. So we're gonna wire in a weather rated on off push button right off the 20 volt battery. This will shut off all the charging with a simple button switch. And then we're gonna wire in a low voltage cutoff board. It's basically low voltage protection that's customizable. And we're going to set this at where DeWalt's usually shut off which gives us a safety buffer from draining those cells below three volts a piece. We also wanted to use one whose display would not stay on, limiting parasitic drain. Same deal for the buck converter that we're wearing in next here. Low amp capacity means no fan cooling needed, no display, and minimal power to run. This also has reverse charge protection and also protection against those clamps touching at the end should they get mixed up in an accident. From there, we use zip cord for the wires to stay together and not have a headphone earbuds effect. And that goes out the case through a small drilled hole that's then filled in with hot glue. 
And then those leads come out to connect to the clamps with some more heat solder string connectors that seem to have fared pretty well for us in different weather types. Last thing we wanted to put on this box was a voltage display. Currently it looks like a useless box device with a single switch. Not much to tell you what's going on or if it's working without opening it up and seeing if that battery is dead. So our last step is going to be drilling out a large hole and installing this voltage meter that has an on off button so that it doesn't stay running. And for this, we'll split that zip cord apart inside and tap into those wires for a live reading of the car battery voltage. This will also give you a battery charge percentage. So with the button off, you can read the vehicle's battery health or with it on, you're reading the charging voltage that it's working with. So even after topping up my car battery from 70%, my prototype week later here still shows four bars on this 12 amp hour battery. So it doesn't use all that much juice. It measured 19.45 volts down from 20.7 starting. So about 80% charge on the 12 amp hour here, which means on a mostly charged car battery on this vehicle, a five amp hour battery might last three to five weeks. And this one should last around one and a half to two and a half months before needing a top up but not so much on this one that we're building. After some testing, while the low voltage relay has a five milliamp standby mode, it's pretty much being used 100% of the time and never in standby. And we find that to be about 50 milliamps, which works out to about a watt, which doesn't sound like a lot, but using the smallest battery DeWalt mix, the 1.7 amp hour power stack, this was down to one bar after one day of running this thing. And while it's not quite warm to the touch, it is 90 to 92 degrees in some small spots, this measurement vouching for that parasitic loss turning into heat. So that 12 amp hour battery would be dead in 10 to 11 days hooked up this way. And all the other low voltage cutoff relays that we've found seem to be the same or worse for parasitic drains. So until I find something uber efficient, these connectors in here were set up to be modular and a new one can be chained in at any time very simply. So for now, this display will be tied in to show the power tool battery voltage as an easy way to check it once a month or so by just pressing the button on the top here to make sure it's over 15 volts, which hey, if this works well, is an even simpler build overall for anyone that wants to make one. And well, yeah, Bob's your uncle going to package this up with the Hercules charger and 12 amp hour battery in it should be pretty useful. And flash forward to now, he seems pretty stoked about it and it appears to do the trick. So now he can drive his babies even less than he already does and have even more project cars. Thanks for joining me on this short mess about. We'll continue back to our regularly scheduled tool testing next week. And thanks for watching.